Hello YouTube, this is Don from the YouTube channel Bitter Hiker. Today we're offloading. We are at Trey Mountain Road, just outside of Helen in Georgia. We're just driving, there's no hiking involved. It's raining, um, which adds a little intrigue to it. So thanks for checking out the channel. If you're new, welcome. If you've been to the channel before, welcome back. Enjoy the show. Helen, Georgia is a very picturesque, very touristy town in the North Georgia mountains. All of the buildings tend to have a very German architecture. There is a lot of uh, beautiful buildings to look at, including the church, as well as there are stores and restaurants for shopping and eating that all have this German look to them. Uh, the Chattahoochee River runs through the town and it allows for a lot of outdoor activities such as fishing and tubing. Helen is very close to a lot of other things such as golfing, hiking, off-roading. And as I also mentioned, it is accessible to the Chattahoochee River for tubing. And it's a great place to get away for the week. Now to get to Trey Mountain Road, you need to travel north outside of Helen on Highway 75, heading towards Hiawassee. The road itself is easy to miss, but if you have a navigator, such as Apple Map or Google Maps or any other mapping software, it would take you there. Um, it's not that far outside of Helen. I would say maybe two, three miles north of the city on Highway 75, you will come across this very, nondescript road at this on the right hand side of highway 75 and then you turn on to trey mountain road which is mostly gravel now the length of trey mountain road is around seven miles in length as far as difficulty for off-roading it is not a very particularly difficult road until you get to the last two miles. So the first five miles is uh, pretty easy going. It gets rough in some spots. I would say maybe three fourths of the road is paved in gravel. So if you want to attempt this in a car that has two wheel drive, you may do be able to do it and get away with it. I would recommend you take a car with four by four and with some type of ground clearance because the last two miles of this road tends to get a little on the bumpy side so you would be driving on this road for five miles on a pretty even terrain with some bumps here and there and then the last two miles are going to be very rough there are homes along this road not a lot but there are some homes scattered on the on the mountain so uh, people do use this road to get to and from their homes. One thing to notice, there is no street lighting. So if you do this during the day, you'd be fine. If you attempt to do this road at night, uh, you need to have some kind of accessory lighting, like a light bar or fog lights or something to help illuminate the way because it is pretty forested. It is pretty forested, but it offers some nice views in spots. So as you drive along, you might be able to stop and get views of the North Georgia mountains. But for the most part, it is pretty much wooded uh, along the road all the way up to the top. You will know you've gotten to the top when you see two things. You would get to a very big clearing at the, at the top. You will also see a gated section on the road to so the road is cut off and closed off with a very big gate at the end so you can't drive down to the other side so once you see that gate the only thing you can do is turn around now there was another road off to the top uh heading off in another direction when we got to the top we would be very adventurous we didn't want to go and try to figure out where it uh was that separate road was going to take us to. So we decided to go back down the way we are driving up right now. 
there is a crossing of the Appalachian Trail at the very top. So from time to time, you will see people hiking. So one of the things that we do caution is as you drive up this road, try to keep your speed to below 25 miles per hour. Anywhere between 20 to 25 miles per hour is probably a good enough speed that would allow you to stop in time in case uh, you see another car coming. The road is very, very narrow. Uh, it doesn't allow in a lot of places for two cars to pass side by side. So going at 20 to 25 miles per hour allows you to stop. And then it also allows you to also stop if you see someone walking or hiking because this road is also uh, open to hikers as well. People do hike this to the top and back down and people do hike to the Appalachian Trail and continue on with their hiking from there. So try to maintain a good speed of 20 to 25 miles per hour. One of the things you will notice is from time to time you will see trees that have fallen across the road or that may have blocked the road and then will you know cut up and removed so you may want to keep your eyes open for any fallen branches making sure that if you hear any sudden cracks and splits make sure that you're not under or close to a tree because a tree may come down and you definitely don't want that tree coming down on your car whilst you're driving up this road the day that we went started off nice and sunny and then as we started to drive further and further up the mountain road it started to rain and in those spots where the gravel was not covering the ground the it can get a little tricky and treacherous if you do not have a car with four-wheel drive or you don't have all-wheel drive or some other traction capacity to make you uh, get over those spots there are a number of mud spots along the way so if you want to play in the mud you can just be mindful that if you get stuck you may need to have recovery gear or may have to wait for someone else on the road to kind of pull you out it is it is a fun road take it for what it is it's a nice gentle road to do a nice sunday drive with the family just to be outdoors there are places you can stop and see the views it is nice to kind of drive and see the homes that are up there i think there were like three homes that i saw along the way um so it's nice to kind of look at the scale of those homes and wonder how did they get the material to build these homes up into this what i would call a pretty remote area with a with a kind of a sketchy road there is one roadside waterfall nothing much to boast about but it is something that you can stop and look at with the kids and the family and just check it out and uh, it kind of adds to the experience of being outdoors but for the most part you get a forest scene scenery and uh, you just would be going uphill for quite a while so in summary road is around seven miles each way driving predominantly uphill the first five miles are going to be pretty easy to navigate on a dry day you can probably get away with doing this with front wheel drive or rear wheel drive i would strongly suggest you have all wheel drive or four by four capability you don't necessarily need to have um a truck with lifted suspension but it would be nice to have I would always err on the side of caution of having what I need to get out of a sticky situation. I don't want to take my Prius up this road and then you get stuck or your tires lack the grooving to give you the traction to get out of a sticky spot and then you have to wait a couple hours for someone passing by to try to pull you out. So always be prepared. Don't uh, underestimate the, 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 the capacity of your vehicle to get stuck and for you to get stranded up here. Also make sure you have a spare so that if you do, you know, lose tire pressure, you can also, you can always switch your tires and be able to get back out. I didn't see a lot of wildlife up here. I didn't see any deers or bears or snakes or anything of that sort, but that's not to say they're probably not around maybe they were 
sleeping the day that I was there, or maybe they were out hiking or doing family stuff. But I didn't encounter any wildlife while I was driving up the road. I did encounter some cars coming by, and I did stop and talk to a few of them to kind of get a sense of how much further I had to go and the condition of the road because. I had done this road once before. I had not done it in the rain. I had done it with another vehicle, a Chevy Trailblazer, which had less off-road capability than my forerunner. But it's been a while, so I, I did stop and talk to some folks and try to find out, you know, what the road condition was like. And I also wanted to know if the road was open. On the other side, for us to kind of drive to the um, to the other side of the mountain, and they all confirmed that yes, the gate was still in place, so we really couldn't um, go from one end of the mountain to the next. So, enjoy the video. I wanted this to be more of a scenic drive type video, trying to give you a sense of what the road is like. You will see after a while that the road gets a little more bumpy. And then once my buddies and I make it to the top of the mountain, you know, we got out, took some pictures. We did see some folks walking on the Appalachian Trail, and we we encountered, I believe, two people. One person, a female, was walking on the road itself, heading、uh, down the mountain. And I believe she had done one leg of the Appalachian Trail with her dad. And he must have been very far ahead, or may have been off the trail doing something. I just didn't see him. But there was one female walking by herself, heading down the mountain. And then in the video, I was able to capture one person who was on the Appalachian Trail. He had his rain gear on, and he was just hiking and you know enjoying it. And that's one thing I would like to do one day. I would like to do a hike. Uh, to along a portion of the Appalachian Trail, I did go to the Blood Mountain shelter on the Appalachian Trail, and unfortunately, I did not video that、uh, hike opportunity. So guess what? I have to do it all over again. So I'm gonna go do that in a few weeks, and I will post up that video of me hiking the Appalachian Trail to the Blood Mountain shelter, and hopefully, you guys subscribe to the channel. Like this video and turn on your notification bell to keep up with that because it is pretty interesting. The views of the North Georgia mountains from the top of Blood Mountain it is spectacular. So I encourage you to subscribe to the channel to keep up with all of the content. And once I do that hike in a few weeks, I will be posting it right here. So for everyone who Has never been to Georgia. I want to know what the hiking situation is like in Georgia. You'll be able to watch that video and keep up with my hiking of the Appalachian Trail. And then I also want to do a longer portion of the Appalachian Trail at some point. I would love to hike from Georgia to maybe the South Carolina border. I don't know if I want to go all the way to Maine. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm built for that just yet. I mean, one can't underestimate the human body, right? I mean, you can do anything that you want as long as you put your mind and and heart into it. And I'm cap, I'm sure with some practice, I would be able to do the whole thing. But as of right now, I would be able, I would be happy with doing maybe a good leg of the、um, Appalachian Trail. So maybe just go from Springer Mountain. Where the Appalachian Trail ends to the South Carolina border, and then stop there, and、uh, probably make my way back home. But as we continue driving along Trey Mountain Road, you can see some of the homes along the the, the road, and、um, yeah, they're fenced and you know kind of set back from the road. But you can kind of get a sense just at looking at the fencing that wow, maybe these are some huge estates back there. So there are, as I mentioned, probably three of them. And then also one of the things I realize is as you drive around the road, people own property alongside the road, 
and they've not developed it. So people do come out here on the weekends and camp on their plots and would be barbecuing and stuff. So sometimes as you're driving along, you might see some little cutouts that's access to property owned by people. So you might be, I wouldn't recommend you go down and drive on what may potentially be someone's personal property. But it is cool to know that if something were to go wrong, there might be someone around who can help you out of a sticky situation. Another thing to be mindful of, I did talk about the mud um, holes that you will see on the trail. So yeah, there will be some mud holes that if you are adventurous, you can drive through. If you have friends with you, you may want to drive through and splash. Um, just be mindful. If you get stuck, make sure you have an op- a way to get out of the um, situation that you may have gotten yourself into. As you continue along the road, the road splits at a certain point. Uh, if you stay on the right-hand side of the road heading up, to the top of the mountain that is the continuation of the Trey Mountain Road if you go to the right that road is called Indian Graves Road and it takes you to two waterfalls that I love going to in the summer and I will be doing a video on those two waterfalls uh, pretty shortly as well I just love those waterfalls they're so picturesque and you can actually get in the water and you can swim or you can get into the water and take photographs in front of the waterfall. They're just that beautiful. So be on the lookout for those two videos. Um, well, it will probably be one video containing the two waterfalls since they're not that far apart. But be sure that you're subscribed to the channel uh, to keep up with those content. Uh, the hike to Blood Mountain as well as the hike to my two favorite waterfalls. I wouldn't call them my two favorite. I would say they're two pretty nice waterfalls. There are some others that I think are my favorite that I would also be hiking to and taking a video of. One is Panther Creek. And uh, it that one is, is it, to me, the first time I did that waterfall, it was tough because it was maybe seven miles in length in and out so about 3.5 miles each way to the panther creek falls and it was gnarly the trail had gotten washed out by a hurricane or something so some of the bridges that you had to cross over like streams and stuff were washed out um there were trees along the trail so you had to do a lot of scrambling and climbing etc that one was pretty tough and then my next uh favorite waterfall is helton creek falls maybe i would say it is it's not much of a hike but i will be going there and i would definitely be bringing you a video of me hiking to helton creek falls so definitely be subscribed for the, all of those content i want you to see me on the blood uh, the blood mountain on the Appalachian Trail. I want you to see me going to Panther Creek Falls. I want you to see me doing uh, Helton Creek Falls. I want you to see all of the different things that we have here in Georgia, because if you don't live here, you don't have the opportunity to experience and be able to see some of the great things that we have access to. And I want you to keep up with that try to encourage you to come out here and if you can't well at least see the 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 state of georgia through my eyes uh because there's a lot to see and i will be bringing a lot of that content uh from around the state to my channel so please stay stay subscribed uh like the videos um encourage your friends to subscribe to the videos so share the videos with them and be on the lookout for my videos i publish every friday i believe at 3 p.m eastern or 4 p.m eastern uh so yeah every friday i have a new video coming out new location new experience and probably new views etc so just say stay subscribed and you'll be uh going alongside me as i do my hiking and everything else So for the rest of the video, I am just going to have some background music playing. And once we get to the very top, 
you will get to see the views that I saw from up there. You'd get to see the Appalachian Trail hiker, uh, and then see some of my friends just goofing off at the top of the mountain and uh, get to experience what we experienced driving up. And I hope as you were looking at the video, you can see what I talked about with some of the trees overhanging the road. Yeah, there are a lot of trees that are overhanging the road. And um, you can also see some of those big mud holes. In some places, I kind of didn't go through them because I didn't want to add additional damage to the road. So I just kept driving. But uh, we did stop a few times. I did cut those stops out of the video because we stopped and we were looking at the views from through the trees. There was just a lot of tree cover. So I couldn't really get good pictures to insert into the video. So I kind of just cut out the locations where I stopped. So when you're looking at the video, you might see certain places where my car might perceptibly be slowing down. And then there might be a little jump and then I'm back on the road again. So those are the places where I stopped to kind of sightsee and get some fresh air, etc. The thumbnail of this video, you will see a graffitied rock and that rock is right around the corner on Indian Graves um, Road. Now remember I told you that there's a split in the road where if you keep going to the right and going up, you take you go to the top of Trey Mountain and then if you were to go to the left, it would take you to my two waterfalls. Uh, it, coming back down, we did go on Indian Graves Road and we stopped at the rock and took some pictures. It's really, really nice. So I encourage anyone, if you live in the vicinity and you are able to travel here, uh, you have the ground clearance, you have the 4x4, or if you're super confident in your car, I recommend you try it and then just go up there. Just for that alone, um, it's worth taking some pictures. So that's the picture in my thumbnail. But then um, as you keep going up the mountain, if you kind of realize the road is starting to get a little more and more rough as we go up. Nothing that I think a, you know, a Toyota Corolla can do, but I wouldn't do this with my Toyota Corolla. I wouldn't recommend you take your Toyota Corolla or your Toyota Prius up this road and get stuck. Okay, because again, as we were driving up, it started off dry and very warm and then it started to rain and it, was, it wasn't it was pouring like a torrential rain or anything, but it was enough to get the ground slick. And if you look at the ground right now, you can kind of tell, you can see water pooling in different spaces along the road. So with the ground being slick, with the mud being on the ground, with the ground being kind of uneven, uh, I would say, you know, make sure your car is capable for this type of off-roading before you go out there. You definitely don't need a three-inch lift and you don't need long travel suspension and you don't need skid plates and you don't need any of those body armor that you would take if you are going rock crawling. It's nice to have that stuff for... If you need them, then you will. But for this road in particular, you definitely don't need that type of stuff. You can take your basic Jeep with basically no uh, accessories on it, off-road accessories on it. You can take this up this trail and you'd be fine. Would, you, would I recommend a minivan? No. Would I recommend a Prius? No. Would I recommend a Corolla? No. But if you have one of those pickup trucks, I could say, yeah, you could probably do that. If it has two wheel drive, I'd be like, oh yeah, make sure you have a way to get out. Make sure you have a winch or you have some kind of recovery or traction boards, just in case you kind of get stuck in one of these mud holes or you have uh, a friend with you who can pull you out using his truck. But um, enjoy the rest of the video. I hope my song selection is kind of good. And I will see you at the top of Trey Mountain on this road.
We just saw this guy, he's hiking the Appalachian Trail. There is a road that continues down this way. We got to the top of Trey Mountain and on this side, are you doing a Nevada run? <laughs> but down on this side, the, um, the road is closed off. So we either turn around and go down or we continue going forward. And I'm not sure what's down that way. All right, YouTube, so that concludes our trip to Trey Mountain Road, just outside of Helen, Georgia, in the North Georgia Mountains. Really nice ride. You definitely need some ground clearance. You definitely may need some 4x4. Very nice road. Check it out. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.